to the House Minority Leader, Congressman uh, from California, Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Congressman, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, and then uh, Donald Trump came out, and he had a confession last night. He said he broke the cardinal rule of D.C. politics. He kept his word. <laughs> You know, he kept his word, he likes to say, more than he even gave it, his promises. You watch that, uh, as we have this campaign in just 67 more days, for what they promised to do for the next four years, it's very important to see what you've done in the past. This president, what he's been able to do, walk through, rebuild our military, build the strongest economy, criminal justice reform, kept, built the wall. Um, and then you look at Joe Biden. Joe Biden has a 47-year history of being in Washington. This history is so old. Do you know when Joe Biden first went to the Senate, he served with people who was born in the 1800s? And now, I do not know how you're going to become the leader of the free world if you will not leave Delaware. He wouldn't even leave during the convention. You cannot listen to people. You cannot lead the free world by thinking you put a few movie stars on the stage. That's the difference what I saw in these conventions, that we had the real heroes of America, the average Americans that struggle every single day. And what they would say, regardless of Republican or Democrat, that they found in Donald Trump that he listened to the forgotten person, that voice that others would not. That's what he promised, and that's what he kept for the last four years. Yeah, like the Alice Marie Johnsons of the world. She was supposed to spend the rest of her life behind prison and didn't didn't even have a record other than this, this one um, mistake that she made. And uh, he got her out of prison, and uh, she said she was on stage last night talking about how he changed her life, clearly, and she was so excited to see her family and hug her grandkids. Jack Brewer said uh, two nights ago he was always a Democrat. He is a Democrat, but he's voting for Donald Trump. There were others that said the same thing. Listen to this. Liberalism has changed, and I don't fit there anymore. I'm a Democrat. My parents are Democrats. I was a huge Obama supporter. In the 2016 primary, I voted for Bernie Sanders. I mean, I was a socialist. It feels like Democrats sort of get people hooked on this drug of free money, where they basically say, you know, if you want your fix, you have to keep voting for us. His entire campaign worse for all Americans, that was a turning point for me. I want people to hear my story and know that you can actually go from being a democratic socialist to a Trump supporter. I hope that Trump wins and that we can continue with the progress that he's made and the policies that he's put into place. Was a socialist. Now she's voting for President Trump. Why do you think this is happening? Because the president personally touched him. The thing with the different with the president is he puts America first. He doesn't put the party. And to be able to move those many people, if, if you spent a few days watching this convention, I know you had every emotion, from a cheering to a crying, to the empathy, to the empowerment of this country. And that, that's just such a great contrast to the Democrats. I felt emptiness when I left there. I knew they hated the president. I knew they want to raise taxes. I know they wanted to fund the police. But tell me, what are you going to do for the average American right. to make this place better? So people should understand what's at stake. If uh, the Democrats win the White House, they're most likely going to win the Senate. Uh, that means they're going to blow up the filibuster. So whatever Joe Biden wants and Bernie Sanders wants, that's what the country is going to get because nothing will be there to stop them if you guys can't find a way to win the House. And then you look at places like Washington, D.C., uh, and you realize that's going to become a state because that's what they'll want. Meanwhile, if you understand uh, some of the anger in Washington, D.C. towards Republicans, evidently all you had to do was watch the exit, uh, uh, the exit ramps from last night's event because waiting for them was uh, angry crowds. Rand Paul felt as though if the cops weren't there, he actually, him and his wife might not have survived. And then the, if I'm looking at Ari Fleischer's feed on Twitter, and you could see people just walking out from the event were being screamed at, expletives thrown their way, just because they went to the White House to support the president. Describe, Kevin McCarthy, the level of anger in Washington towards the right. Well, it's not just in Washington. I mean, if you, you don't have to watch these conventions to understand what this d the country would look like. Go to Portland, go, go to Chicago, go to New York. That is what this country will, because those are all run by Democrats. They're allowing this to go forward. For individuals to be out there, to harass another individual simply because they came to the White House. But they're not harassing. They're almost to the point of violence. And you don't even have to wait to a speech in the White House. You can just go to a restaurant in Washington, D.C.
and you're going to get intimidated. You're going to get harassed. You've never you have seen to this do before. What they want to be able to Kevin, survive. you have not seen this before. I've seen it many times. No, but you have you it? seen it before President Trump took the White House? Have you seen this level of anger? <laughs> no, and, and the sadness is what I watched the day after he was inaugurated. I remember driving from the hotel, the, what the streets were filled with. It, it started from day one to never give him an opportunity, which is so sad because the history of this country, regardless of who wins the White House, there's usually a honeymoon. This poor man has never had that moment to govern. But in, in all that, he has never Never stop fighting. And all that, think about what he's been able to achieve. The tax cuts, putting more people to work, bringing jobs back from overseas, raising everybody up, regardless of color mm -hmm. of skin or gender. Think well, about how much more we could do if this president had a Congress and a Senate that would work for them. That's why we could actually retire Nancy Pelosi if people would go to takethehouse.com because it's more than just the presidency. This is the nation and the next century. Is it going to be America's? Are we going to guarantee that tomorrow will be better than today? Because what I watched for the four days at the Democrats and four days at the Republicans, it's not hard to make a decision now. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard to go out and make the case. It doesn't matter if you're Republican, independent, or Democrat. It's a clear choice here. Joe Biden is not the same as he was before. Barack Obama has even said that there is no difference between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is a registered socialist. So either we're going to go forward in right. prosperity or we're going to go backwards in poverty. We're either going to go forward in freedom or mm -hmm. backward in socialism. It's a very clear choice. Well, you would like Nancy Pelosi to be retired because then you'd probably take over. But that's that's a different story for another time. Uh, one of the things that has been made clear over the last four nights of the RNC is we're talking about something that nobody talked about last week, and that was the the law, uh, the lawlessness, the chaos in America's streets. You know, it, it started with the killing of George Floyd, and there were protests. But then, unfortunately, it turned into things like uh, looting and uh, vandalism and all sorts of arson and stuff like that. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, who did not mention it last week, but has since, he suggested yesterday that uh, the president is actually rooting for more violence. He said, uh, Joe did, he's pouring gasoline on the fire. But finally, this week, he said, twice this week, he said, I condemn the violence in any form, whether it's looting or whatever it is. Why is he talking about it this week and not last week when they had the big stage? There's two things he did not talk about in his speech. He did not talk about what was going on in this country right then, day in and day out in Portland. He, he would not talk about the unrest in America because he supported it. You know, 13 people on his campaign actually gave money to bail people out who were looting and beating people up. So he must support that. He has actually said he would defund the police. He says, I didn't use the word. No, he wants to re reallocate the money. That's defunding the police. It's too late for Joe Biden to stand up to what has been going on day in and day out. And the part that I see is when we look at what happened in Wisconsin, President Trump leaned in and was going to help the National Guard to be able to get there. The governor of Wisconsin said no and only brought 250 troops when they were asking for 750 to 1,500. So weak. It only perpetuated the problem. All right, Congressman, All right. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, it's going to be an interesting 67 days, and it looks like something happened with this convention because suddenly Joe Biden says, I will start campaigning after Labor Day. I believe if he was so secure in front, he would not be coming out of his basement. So uh, game on. Yep. Uh, thanks, Congressman. Thank, Thank you. you. I look forward to the debate. Uh, if they happen, Nancy Pelosi saying, <laughs> hope, suggesting he doesn't debate, but we'll see. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. You're welcome.